Jesus f***ing Christ. <clears throat> Hi, Joe here again for Busby Bakes. So we're going to take a little break from the sourdough videos just while we're waiting for your starters to come up to speed and get nice and vigorous. Um, so a few weeks ago I had a request from an Ernest Hems his way. See what he did there? Nice. Um, he said, can you please make those really soft brown breads that are so good with butter and just a cup of hot cocoa? Yes, we can. So today's video is going to be how to make soft wholemeal buns. And I'm going to use the opportunity to give you as many tips as possible to make sure your bread comes out with a nice, light, soft crumb. Okay, so soft wholemeal buns. Uh, for this recipe you're going to need wholemeal flour, strong white bread flour, 15 grams of instant yeast, 20 grams of salt, 30 grams of unsalted butter and 650 millilitres of whole milk. Now I've done the usual trick of melting the butter and then adding the cold milk to the pan afterwards just to bring the milk up to temperature a little bit. If you're using milk directly from the fridge at like 4 degrees uh, that's really going to inhibit your yeast activity and it's going to take an awful long time for your dough to rise. So melt the butter, add the milk, it just raises the temperature a little bit. Also a little disclaimer, um, I went to my cupboard to get the wholemeal flour out and found they didn't have any, but I have got this malted uh, grain flour, which is basically a strong brown bread flour with malted grains in it. So I'm going to be using that, but you want to be using a wholemeal bread flour or a spelt flour would be very nice. So to kick things off uh, with a tip actually, Wholemeal breads are naturally going to be denser than white bread. White bread is just always going to be the lightest. So the first tip basically is to cut your wholemeal flour with a percentage of strong white bread flour. Now I'd recommend anything from 20% to 50% uh, strong white bread flour. If you go above that people may argue you're not making a wholemeal loaf at all. So I'm going to do 50% today, I'm going to do all my tips to their extreme to hopefully get the lightest bread possible at the end, or it may just collapse and fail, but we'll see. Um, so I'm gonna do 50%, but I'd like say anywhere between 20 and 50. So that's gonna be 500 grams of the wholemeal flour. A little bit over, but it doesn't matter. And 500 grams of strong white bread flour. So this is gonna give us a kilo of flour in total. There we go. So to that we add our 15 grams of instant yeast, our 20 grams of salt and our 650 millilitres of whole milk with the butter melted in it. That all goes in. Okay, so into the mixer, and we're going to mix this for five to ten minutes. <clears throat> okay, that's starting to look quite good, but before we finish mixing it, I'll just explain about the milk. So normally when you're making bread, you use water, but if you want to get an even lighter crumb, you can substitute that water for milk. So you don't have to go full milk, you could go 50% water, 50% milk. But like I say, we're going to do all these tips to the extreme to try and get the lightest bread possible. And so I've gone 100% milk. I've also added a bit of fat in the form of butter. Now you could use oil, so olive oil or rapeseed oil. But I think with the milk and the whole milk, the butter is going to go very nicely. Uh, but both of those things are just going to ensure the bread is even lighter than normal and it also extends the shelf life. So this bread should still be nice and soft after three, maybe even four days. Uh, and by the end of the week, it's still going to be perfect for making toast. So we'll finish mixing this and we'll show you what to do next. Okay, that's been just over five minutes and it's looking good. 
So I'll just scrape that off the dough hook. There we go. Now you may have to adjust your hydration a little bit. Wholemeal flours do absorb more water, more liquid. So if it's looking very uh, thick when you're mixing it, always just add in a little splash of milk or you could just have a splash of water just to loosen it up a bit. This is looking fine. So as usual, we'll put a plate on that and let that proof for a good hour, hour and a half or till the dough's touching the plate. Okay, our dough has proved. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how long that's been, probably an hour, hour and a half, something like that. But it is touching the plate just, which is a good sign. Um, now you do hear a lot of bakers say, don't watch the clock, watch the dough, which is kind of annoying and somewhat pretentious. But if you can get past that, it does kind of make sense because you have to look at it as any recipe is a guide for bread making. Ultimately, there's only one bread recipe, which is flour, water, yeast, salt. The rest of it is time and technique. So if a recipe says leave your bread to proof for an hour, uh, they don't know how warm your house is, your ingredients were, there's a lot of varying factors. So you might come after an hour and find your dough has only risen halfway up. You don't want to carry on from there because that's just going to be too dense. There's not enough fermentation in there, not enough carbon dioxide has been produced. So just leave it for longer. Don't worry what the recipe is saying. You have to sort of see what your dough is doing. So that's why I always say wait until it's touching the plate. That means it's at least doubled in volume, if not more. Uh, and we're on our way to hopefully a nice light loaf. So we're going to tip this out onto a lightly floured worktop. I've been using this Kamut flour lately for dusting. It's like a really fine sort of semolina, so not too much of it sticks to the dough. You don't end up with a real coating of white flour on it. So it's quite a nice tip. So tip that out. Again, as always, try not to damage the dough too much. We've created all that gas, we've trapped all those bubbles, so don't go and tear it now and release them. Try and get it out in one lump without stretching and tearing it too much. And there we go. So now we're going to make this into rolls. So we'll divide it up. I reckon something around 80 grams per roll would be a nice generous bun. A teeny little bit more flour on top just so it doesn't stick. Stretch it out. Now again to get our nice soft buns we want to divide this up using as few slices as possible. You want to be able to eyeball kind of 80 grams for each one. Now that's kind of unlikely. But um, what you don't want to be doing is making your buns up from five, six, seven pieces of tiny dough that you're squidging back together because that's all pushing the gas back out uh, and you're going to end up with a much denser bun. So I reckon that's got to be around Oh, that's way too generous, that's 136. So, that's 100. There we go, 90. So now I'm going to try and get my rest of them out like that. With one cut. Preferably, you want to be a little bit over rather than under, because then you can take that off. 90. And what we'll do, it's a little experiment, at the end we'll clump all the offcuts together and bake that one off and we'll see if there's any difference in the crumb. So just divide this up into as many buns at about 80 or 90 grams. There we go. So all those little offcuts, so that's 100 grams. So it should be a little bit bigger so we'll be able to spot it. So now to shape them, already you've got potentially a top and a, and a bottom, well at this stage two tops uh, and you've got the sticky cut side around it. So you want to use one of the floured smooth sides as your top. So put it down again on a lightly floured bit, stretch it out, put your thumb in the middle and just keep folding the sides in on itself. So those sticky bits are going to come in and they will stick together 
So now you've got that nice smooth side over the top. Claw hand over it, tucking the fingertips underneath just to put it into the round. There we go. And I like to give it a little squeeze, just not all the way down, we don't want to push all the air out, but just so they don't end up being like golf balls. I like my buns kind of bun shaped. And that can go onto the tray. We should fit 12 to 15 on here. We'll let them proof together, we'll bake it as a um, batch bake, and that way when you tear them apart you're going to end up with the softer bits around them. So we're going to reduce the amount of crust on there, all in an effort to make these nice, light and soft. So we'll shape the rest of these. Okay, then the last one we're going to put in that bottom corner will be made up from all the offcuts. So straight away you can see you haven't got a side that's naturally going to be the top. It's already got cracks in it. So we'll try and stretch out one of the bigger bits, fold it in on itself, try and get it into a ball. There we go, that's come together quite nicely. So We'll do this little test, we'll put it open afterwards and we'll see if this one has a more dense crumb than the other ones. So there we go, we've got our 15 rolls. Cover them with a tea towel or a bit of cling film. If you're going to use cling film, maybe just give them a light dusting of flour just to stop it sticking. And let them proof for half an hour, 45 minutes, but again, don't watch the clock, watch the dough. I'm becoming annoying now. Um, and once they've puffed up a bit, joined together, we'll give them a bake. Okay, so they've been proofing for about 35 minutes, uh, puffed up nicely, they've all proofed together, so we'll be able to tear them apart afterwards. So let's get them in the oven. Okay, so I've got the oven preheated to 200 degrees. I've got a roasting pan in the oven ready to put some water in. So we're gonna bake these for 15 to 20 minutes. So put them in, after 10 minutes, turn the tray so they cook evenly, then check them after 15 minutes in total. Uh, if they're cooked, take them out. If not, give them another five minutes, take it up to 20. Uh, remember, we want these to be soft buns, so we're not looking for too much color and too much crust. So in they go. Water into the pan which is nice and hot. That's creating steam. And there we go. Okay, so there we go. They've baked for, I did them for about 16 minutes in the end. Looking lovely, smelling amazing. Really, you can actually, just that little bit of butter in there, you can really smell it. So, these are still a little bit warm, but that's okay. And I've cooled them down under a tea towel to try and trap a little bit of the steam that's coming off them to soften up the tops again, because again, we don't want crunchy, crispy rolls, we wanted nice, soft rolls. So, let's pull, I'm gonna take one off from the, this corner. I can't remember which one was our test one, that'll be one of those two. But look at that, nice and soft. Let's cut that one open. It's probably still a bit steamy. Lovely, look at that. Beautiful, light, like I say, smells wonderful. I'm gonna take these two corner ones off, which were our test ones, cut them open to see if we can see any difference. You really would wanna let them cool totally before you cut them open. Well, not really. They all look about the same, so maybe you can make them from lots of little bits of dough. I try not to, just to guarantee it. Um, but that's it. So there you go, Mr. Hems's way. That is how you make soft wholemeal buns. Personally, I would eat them with a nice bit of cheddar or any cheese, but if uh, butter and cocoa is your thing, then who am I to argue? So I hope that's been useful. Again, if you've liked it, leave a like. 
Any questions or comments, leave them below. I will get back to you. Um, any suggestions for future videos, please let me know. Um, I hope your sourdough starter is coming along well, and I will see you next time where we will be baking our first sourdough loaf. Bye-bye.